Welcome, let's talk about the installation of FDS under Linux or macOS. The installation process for both is very similar, so I will just focus here on Linux. However, I will highlight differences to the macOS installation process along the way. For the purpose of demonstration, I have created a virtual machine with Linux, here Ubuntu. Now we need to download the installer. You can simply search for FDS download. From the search results, navigate to the NIST homepage that provides the FDS SmokeView downloads. Here we get different options to download FDS and SmokeView bundles. The bottom two are either the installers for macOS or Linux. I will download the installer for Linux. To start the installation process, open the directory where the installer is located in Terminal. Simply right click and open Terminal. With ls we get an overview over the files that are all located in this directory. In this particular case it is only the shell script of the FDS installer. We can run this shell script by typing in bash, followed by a space, followed by the file name. Then hit enter. Now the installer provides a couple of options, I chose option 1. With this I am using the default configuration for the installation. Type 1 and hit enter. Further options are provided as to where the software should be installed. This time I chose option 4 to create a directory that contains the FDS version number in the directory name. Again type 4 and hit enter. Now we are asked if you really want to use this directory, simply type yes or hit enter. Now the installation process begins. Now the installation is complete and only some configuration is left to do. In the end what you would like to achieve is to type FDS into the terminal to start FDS. Right now the terminal does not yet recognize this command. If we now type in FDS and hit enter, we get an error message exactly indicating that. We now need to set the path to our FDS installation. In the example I am presenting here, this information is stored in the bash RC. Because the terminal that I am using is the bash. The FDS installer has already prepared the path definition for us. If we scroll up a little bit we see these definitions. In my particular case I do not use any modules, therefore I can ignore this bottom part. What is needed right now are these two lines. I can highlight them by clicking with the mouse and dragging the cursor over them. Now I hit right click and copy. The bash RC is located in the user's home directory. To navigate to the home directory we can simply type cd for change directory and hit enter. With ls we get a list of the content inside this home directory. For now we only see a couple of directories. The bash RC is a hidden file. If we use only ls we cannot see it if it exists. We need to use ls with the parameter minus "-a", that also hidden files are shown. Now we can see here that a .bashrc file exists. The period in front of the name indicates that this particular file is hidden. Same is true for directories. To open the bashrc we can use a simple text editor, for example nano. Simply type nano space .bashrc and hit enter. With the arrow keys we can navigate through the document. I would like to add the new lines at the end of the file, so I just use the down arrow to go through the end. I wrote an inline comment to indicate that the following lines are associated to FDS. Afterwards I just pasted the lines that we have copied before. Now we can hit Ctrl O to save the file. We ask for a file name and just hit enter. With Ctrl X the file can be closed. Here would also be a difference to the installation process for macOS. To my understanding by default macOS uses Z shell instead of bash. Going back to the FDS download page at the top there is a link to installation instructions. Scrolling down a little bit there is a section about installing FDS. From here we have a link to information about installing FDS under macOS. Scroll down a little bit where the end of the installation process is covered. Since macOS uses Z shell it has a different configuration file. This one is called .zshrc. It should be in your respective home directory and you can change it the same way as I just demonstrated. Next to the two path you can also add some information about the OMP num threads, as well as a definition for unlimited stack size. Under macOS just copy these lines and also put them into your RC file. For Linux I will do it slightly differently and only copy the definition for the OMP threads. I opened the bash RC file again and also added these lines. Under Linux however the definition for the unlimited stack size is slightly different. Back in the installation instructions we now follow the link to the Linux information. Scrolling down a little bit there is a link to information about how to adjust the stack size under Linux. We see here that for bash this command is used. I just copy this and add it also to the bash RC. Now I can save and close this file again. Let's try if we can run FDS now. Type in FDS and hit enter. We are still getting the same error message. Let's scroll up again to the output of the installation. Under point 2 we are reminded to log out and back in so that the changes will take effect. What does this mean? The content of the bash RC file will be loaded when you open a new terminal. It will then be used for this active session. This session would end if you for example close this window. This means that changes that have been performed to the bash RC will not take effect in the active session. This can be demonstrated by simply opening a new terminal. If I type in FDS in the new terminal and hit enter we see that FDS starts. It provides some basic output, for example we see in the revision line which FDS version we have installed. To use FDS you can now either close this terminal and open a new one or in the existing terminal reload the bash RC. To reload the bash RC for an active session you can simply type source 
space tilde slash dot bash rc and hit enter. If we now type fds and hit enter, we see it worked and fds started. With this, the installation is completed. We have set up the path to the fds installation. We have also verified that fds starts and which version was installed. Thank you very much and have a nice day.